Ho, ho, ho! We are here, the Dennis and Andy Show, with a movie review and a few. Uh, last night, we went and saw It's a Wonderful Knife. You know, you heard me right, and you saw that graphic. Yes, it is a takeoff on the classic movie, It's a Wonderful Life, except in this one, uh, this girl, she lives in this, I wouldn't call it a sleepy town, but it's a it's a small little town that has that nice big Christmas tree lighting where everybody comes out and and whatnot. But there's a killer on the loose, and uh, this girl doesn't think anybody pays attention to her, and it's just like, I wish I was, it's like I'm not here. I wish I was never around, and well, your wish is granted, except unlike It's a Wonderful Life, and well, actually... I haven't seen that movie. I don't watch that movie like Dennis does once a year. But in that movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, no, I take it back. People do see him. He's not just a ghost walking around. It's the same thing. Yeah, people see him. They just don't know who he is. Okay, never mind. So you notice it's the Andy show. He asks questions of himself and then answers it. We see how this works. This is how he is in real life. <laughs> it is. But I just realized that that wouldn't make sense. If he was, so, yeah, so this girl comes back. She's like, she doesn't understand at first, but nobody knows her, just like in It's a Wonderful Life. So her life is less than wonderful. And 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 just like it's it's a it's a wonderful life. When she wishes she'd never been born, she finds herself in a nightmare in this parallel universe where uh without without her, things become much worse. So the basic premise is the same. This time she wishes on the Aurora Borealis. And, um, you know, so it's got a lot of things similar, except there's no Clarence. There's no there's no angel. The bad guy here is Mr. Waters, played by Justin Long. He's he's a developer, a bad guy in town. Whereas in the other one, it's Mr. Potter. So, I mean, they tried putting a couple of things that, uh, you know, that were similar in there. But other than the basic, real basic premise, that's about where where, where it ends. Um, you know. Yeah. I mean, Mr. Uh, or the, the angel of death is the killer, as you saw in the movie graphic. And the basic gist is Justin Long's character wants to develop this town and basically take over every business which when you think about it it's like he wants to be the major player in this this small town but you know it's like okay so he'll just run every business away and then take over them so everybody has to rely on him it, you know eh it's it was scream esque in a way, except instead of a black cop, black robes and stuff, and you know the white scream mask. This is the angel, so you know it's like an angel tree topper. It's all white, totally white mask, um, which really had me looking at it, going, "How does he see through that thing?" Um, <laughs> and then Justin Long, Dennis and I are still we're, we're still not sure if he had in a fake set of teeth up front. Oh no, he did. I mean, it was he reminded me completely of um um Walter Groggins. You know how he's got that big set of teeth, the way he talks. And, and I'm sitting there laughing in in the movie because you know, you can yeah. tell he's got big teeth or he sells it and he talks, you know, like you would if you've got an extra set of yeah. teeth in your mouth. And uh, you know, the question is, was he meant to you know, because he is spray tanned and, you know, they make reference to that and he's got these funky contacts in and were these teeth supposed to be that way or, you know, that it's just one of the little mysteries uh, in, in this. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a mystery. I mean, to me, I'll be honest, I thought it was distracting because I saw no, no ad additional character stuff like building with oh yeah give him that it just seemed like he had almost sometimes trouble speaking and such um i mean that's a minor thing uh who was the main actress i i i'll be honest yes. besides joel McHale, i had no idea who the other actors were yeah i'm gonna see if i can uh uh pull it 
up on it. All right. Well, that. Joel McHale was in it. He plays the the main actress's dad. Um, Joel McHale's wife and his uh, sister in law, or that was his sister. Uh, another actress that I thought was recognizable from about 20 years ago, but I couldn't put my finger on it. There's the angel of death right there. Ooh, spooky. But uh, I'm going to show you what I what it reminds me of. Here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is totally. I snickered when you first see him and he's coming down there. That's like, pretty funny. Shit, it's moon night. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so you know, we're not doing, we should have started off by saying we're not doing a separate spoiler review of this movie. It's a it's a slasher flick. You know, the movie starts off, there's this angel of death. He takes out a couple people. He goes to take out the main star's uh, brother. She's able to step in. They're both basically able to fight the guy off. And then she is able to basically kill him reveal who the bad guy is under the mask which by the way do not watch the trailer for those of you who want to run out and see if you watch the yeah. trailer this is what i don't understand the trailer literally spoils like half the movie so yeah. do not see the trailer if you want to watch it just go watch it just warning you yes um so she kills him but then she's on this well, she's sad because one of the one of the people killed in the beginning of the movie before she's able to kill him is her best friend. So if it flash forwards to a year later, the next Christmas, everybody's happy. It is kind of weird. Um, <laughs> so, you know, Joe McHale's the dad, uh, the mother, somebody you'd recognize. I can't remember who she is, but it's Christmas and on Christmas Eve. This was kind of fucked up, actually, on Christmas Eve. In this family, and this isn't the fucked up part, they they allow each person to open one gift. That's fine. I know some families that do that. And so they, they give the daughter this gift, and she opens it, and it's a pink tracksuit. So it's like, okay. So they're like, go try it on. Go try it on. So she goes upstairs to try it on. She comes back down, and she hears some commotion outside. She goes outside. They gave her brother... A brand new, big ass, four door, huge pickup truck. As yeah, his we're gift talking like a fully loaded eighty, ninety thousand dollar pickup yeah. truck. And you're like, you're like, and and the dad and son are like chest bumping and like hugging it out, like yeah. And it's like, and you got the tracksuit. <laughs> and she you even said, she <laughs> walks outside. Yep. And before she said it, my first thought was, if she doesn't say what the fuck, I'm going to be disappointed. And she said something along the lines of what the fuck. So and like, we got you what you needed. <laughs> right. We I want to get you guys right. gifts that you needed. So they're saying she needs a tracksuit to work out. And it's not like this. This actress is overweight or out of shape. And the son, of course, because he's in the real estate business with his dad a year later, it gets a truck. Yeah. So a couple of things that we do have to, you know, talk about. The one thing that that really came to mind in this was uh, South Park, the Pandaverse. This movie was the very typical, oh. you know, uh, put a chick in it, make her gay and lame. And there it is. And literally, I'm sitting there going, wow, this is that very definition as I'm sitting there. They're watching it. And that's what they did. They they had so many references to this in there and being open. It just, it, it didn't need to be for anything in the story. The characterizations, Jane Widrup, she plays the main character. She was adorable. She was, yeah. she was nice. She's kind of going with that uh, uh, Bridget Fonda from Point of No Returns kind of vibe, you know. She had that going. Justin Long, I love him in everything. The slasher movies, Barbarian, he was that movie. And whatever they wrote him was not very good because he tried to create something out of it, but he did. his dialogue was terrible. Yeah, now, he really did try to play that. Well, you know, one of the one of the things I got from his character also 
was a kind of, besides the fact they were doing the play on It's a Wonderful Life, with his character, I also got a little bit of Scrooge out of it. Yes, yes, I would agree with that. And, you know, there's a spot where he's in control of the town, and I don't want to go into very many details, but why and how? Never explained. Um, the, the, the script on this was not very good. Um, the characters, her friend Bernie, so her, be- her new friend uh, is Bernie. She's an interesting, weird, weirdo friend. Um, you know, she was good. I like the chemistry between the two. Joel McHale, who I love as an actor. I like him in everything. He was pretty much non-existent. Um, Most of the people in this were kind of forgettable. Again, I don't think the actors did a bad job. I think it was the the script and the writing on this one. Yeah, and one of the tales, one of the tells is what I meant to say. The movie started and the first, you know, production or whatever logo that came up was Shudder. So one of the things that we kind of, guess or try to surmise is that you know shutter is for those that don't know it's an app you can pay for and it's it's horror movies right and when when i saw that and there was only two people in the theater and it was dennis and i um (laughs) when so it was nice because we could actually mystery signs 3000 it and make jokes during the movie um when i saw that and after the movie my first thought was, I wonder if this was made for Shutter for the app, you know, only. But when they saw Thanksgiving coming out, um, and you know, months ago, because obviously they know this stuff in advance, when they saw, oh, look, there's a Thanksgiving movie coming out that's a slasher flick. We made this Christmas one just for the app. Let's see if we can get it into theaters because we could try to ride off that Thanksgiving you know, hype because Thanksgiving is what we wanted to see, but it just wasn't playing at a time we could make it. So we chose this instead. We will see Thanksgiving. Um, So that is what I actually believe is they got this in theaters to try to ride the coattails of Thanksgiving, except it's a Christmas horror flick. Um, So we'll see if it, if it goes, I'm sure it's going to be on the app any day now. The, I mean, that's really it. I mean, there's another character in it. Dennis can tell us the actress's name. The practical effects. So What's that? one thing, this is a slasher film. We got to talk about the practical effects. Okay. They had practical effects and they were, were not bad. The problem with the practical effects in this was almost all of it was slashing and stabbing of the same thing. There was plenty of blood that went splattering. There was some gore. Um, But there was nothing other than, which again, if you saw the trailer, you already saw kind of how it happened. Um, Most everything is the same thing. So, you know, the one thing that Slasher Film should give us is different ways and be creative about it. And this one wasn't. Um, Again, the effects were good for what it was. There's a severed head down there that looked pretty good. You know, a number of things like that. But when all is said and done, you know, it, it the whole slashing part of it's kind of forgettable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only other character I was going to mention in it is this girl she befriends who everybody calls Weirdo. Uh, that's her nickname. And the funny thing is when you first see her, I don't think weirdo or anything like they didn't do a good enough job i think of tagging the character and what i mean by that is with her clothing what she wears and just her overall look to to you know if you're going to call somebody weirdo if you put them in a lineup with all the other high school kids i should be able to go that's weirdo and i didn't get that vibe i don't know about you but i just didn't get that vibe from her well the problem is her name's bernie they delve into her what she wants to do with her life and it kind of made sense with what they were going but they they didn't do a good enough job of of showing it or really explaining it in the first place they could have showcased it and uh other than this very quick moment when the two of them 
touched souls for a brief second about what they wanted to do. That was about it. Again, it was a missed opportunity. Um, but their chemistry when they were on screen was was fine. Um, like, like I said, it, it, was, it was fine. But I can say that about just about everybody in there. There was nobody that was a standout acting wise. But then again, I, I like I said earlier, I think it's script. I think the script did not provide them with anything outstanding. Yeah, this movie was definitely, like I said, I'm, I'm willing to bet made for Shutter the app. Yeah. All right, let's CGC rate this puppy so uh, so they know what they should do. Uh, I believe it's your turn to go first, so knock it out, big guy. I am giving this one a 5-5. Five five. I thought it was all right. I, I'm glad we kind of got to see it. Thanksgiving was our movie of choice. Couldn't make it to the... The timing on it. So this one was fine. Um, I, I didn't have great expectations. The trailer, like I said, ruined uh, some of it. But, you know, the trailer made me want to watch this. And it kind of delivered. Um, it's a popcorn flick for sure. Uh, don't go in with higher expectations than that. Yep. I'm uh, I'm actually at a straight flat 5-0 on this one. So uh, 0.5 below Dennis, but we average out. It, yeah, just wait for it. I mean, if you're into slasher flicks, it'll be on Shutter soon. If it's not, I mean, if you really want to see it, go to the theater for a matinee. Don't spend a lot of money on it. It's IMDb, short. Yeah, IMDb's giving it a 5.7. And um, Rotten Tomatoes, critics are giving it a 55, audience a 73. I'm really surprised by that audience score, but you know, we are, we are in line with the critics at least. So there you go, guys. And of course, what we give a 10 O is nice and tight. The comic book pencil art by Andy Smith. That's me. A uh, 52 page book. It's oversized. It literally just showcases full pencil pages, not panels, not parts of pages, but literally full pencil pages that I would send in to the editor and send to the inker to work over. I haven't done full pencils in years because I ink my own work. So this is a peek behind the curtain to see what full pencils look like. Uh, there's not many artists out there that, that just pencil anymore. So it's a nice collectible to have. If you're a fan of my work, you definitely want to get this. It's a book that also you can utilize to practice your inking, whether you just buy the book, it's stapled so you can lay it flat, you could scan pages, or you can get the bundle, which has the digital edition where you can open pages in your favorite program to practice inking over as well. There's many different options. There's also uh, the Nice and Tight and the Art of Andy Smith sketchbook. It's a six by nine book. 64 pages that I put out a few years back. It's one of my favorite sketchbooks I've done. I'm re-releasing it, but I'm adding 20 pages of new content at no extra cost to it. So you can get that as well. And one of the coolest things on here, I think, is the one-on-one -on -one video portfolio review. I will sit with you on a call just like this and share my screen and basically take whatever work you would like me to review and for two hours go over it when it's over you will get the full video sent to you as well as all the draw overs uh photoshop files or jpegs so you can open them up at any time to go back and review it's a nice one-on-one -on -one teaching opportunity with a guy that has 32 years of experience in the business so go check it out, guys. You can also get Armor X 1 through 4, which was a book I did back in the early 90s, creator-owned with a buddy of mine. It is very limited. It was a low print run. I've got a few sets left, and they're 30 bucks for the set. Each back cover is drawn by a different artist. Bart Sears, Aaron Lepresti, Jeff Johnson, Curry Randolph. And when we hit 5,000 bucks, I'm going to make the nice and tight book 60 pages instead of 52. Go get it now. Back it. And thank you for joining us, as always, for this movie review. Next week is Thanksgiving. We will be taking the Wednesday off. So we hope you all have a great Thanksgiving with your family. Be That's safe. Right. 
be merry. And on the day after Thanksgiving, uh, going by Dennis's rules, you are allowed to throw that Christmas tree That's out. That's right. Not a day before. Not a day before. So do that. We'll see you guys back on the 29th. Hopefully we'll see Thanksgiving and drop that before Thanksgiving. Take care, everybody. Have a great day and a great weekend. Live long and prosper. You know it. Nice and tight, the comic book pencil art of Andy Smith. That's me. This book features 52 pages of some of my favorite full pencils that I did for other companies over the past two decades. The raw pencils as they were seen by the inker and now you can see them for the first time. This book also comes in a digital format so you can practice your inking in your favorite program. Back it today.